have reached this topic of uh, food industry politics mm. and uh, regulatory regulatory climate. Can you tell some information about this? Because I I know that uh, you you have a deeper insight insight in this topic. I quite often speak to um, officials working with the regulatory agencies, FDA, EFSA, uh, most recently uh, Matisse in, in Iceland. Um, you know, very good people, um, profoundly misinformed, <laughs> in my view. Uh, it's only in my opinion. I'm, I'm sure they would take the same view of me. And um, it's very interesting to me that, you know, when these regulatory agencies look at, let's say, um, you know, this brand of chocolate bar or this brand of hamburger, they're quite happy, you know, for those to be sold because by the standard criteria, these are not hazardous, they're not dangerous. Individually, they're not. But if you look at the food universe, the food environment that people live in today, it is undoubtedly toxic. And it is undoubtedly responsible for vast numbers of premature deaths and a lot of unnecessary suffering. How can we be more specific? Well, um, look at what's being sold in the by the multiple retailers and behind them by a very small number of multinational food producing companies who are responsible for so many of the brands that dominate uh, in, the, in the marketplace. It is a universe where you have an excessive omega-6 to 3 ratio. It is a universe where you have a, terrible depletion of polyphenols. So right away, it's depleted in the factors that protect against chronic inflammation. Also, it's very low in prebiotic fibers. That's important because prebiotic fibers feed the bacteria in the guts that actually promote anti-inflammation. You really want gram-positive microbes in the microbiota to dominate because if the gram-negatives dominate, they produce lipopolysaccharide, which is profoundly pro-inflammatory. So by taking prebiotic fibers out of the diet, which so many of these foods, you know, the processed foods do, you leave the gut compromised and that's another source of inflammation. It has, what else is wrong with the food universe? Well, where to, where to begin? The electrolyte ratios are grotesque, far too much sodium and not enough magnesium and potassium. You pour that toxic mix on top of an inflamed arterial system, it's a recipe for hypertension. This is the reason why the, I think the majority of adults in the developed nations now have borderline or frank clinical hypertension. The food industry is to blame for this. Something else, um, foods traditionally always had uh, 1316 beta-glucans in them from universal contamination with yeast. And we now understand these compounds are essential for innate immune function. There's something else. The yeast particles also interact with dectin receptors in the gut and they have, yes, an anti-inflammatory effect. By sterilizing the food chain, removing these, you have added another piece of coal to the fire that is causing this firestorm of chronic inflammation that is rampant in the general population today and which fills the doctor's surgeries in the hospitals. So the food industry, and I don't want to leave out the pharmaceutical industry, but between them, and the regulators as well, between them, they're responsible for gross criminal negligence and public health malpractice. There is blood on their hands. 